You found it. Your home for the best content on your favorite team, the Fighting Tigers of LSU. Do us a favor. Subscribe to the channel. Leave your comments below. Be sure to smash that like button. I want to start with LSU. Yesterday, uh, disappointing news about Demario Tolan jumping into the portal. Uh, the good news was Jay Bramblett coming back. Now, one of the things that we're going to follow here, certainly over the next week, as the transfer portal window remains open, is uh, got the, the comings and goings, right? Because LSU is still going to be looking to add players where relevant, and Brian Kelly has acknowledged as such. So, um, the the questions are where, what positions might they be looking at, and then what players at LSU might still be looking to jump into the portal. Well, Steve Wiltfong from uh, 247 Sports uh, has it that uh, former Kentucky defensive lineman Justin Rogers will visit Miami this coming weekend after he visits LSU beginning today. So Justin Rogers will be on campus in Baton Rouge Thursday and Friday, and then this weekend he'll head to Miami a quick catch up if you're not familiar with Justin Rogers. When Justin Rogers committed to Kentucky and signed with Kentucky in the 2020 class, uh, he was the fourth highest ranked prospect ever to sign with Kentucky football. Uh, from Michigan, 6'3, 322 is where they have him listed on the official uh, Kentucky uh, roster. As a prospect back in the class of 2020, uh, he was a, a four-star, the number 76 overall prospect in the country, the 11th best defensive tackle, the best player in the state of Michigan. Uh, that was on 247. In the composite, so the, the top sources, uh, recruiting services altogether averaged, he was the 52nd best player in the country, any position, the seventh best defensive tackle, best player in Michigan, signed with Kentucky, Played sparingly in 2020. It was the COVID year, of course, his true freshman season. And then in 2021, played in every game, part of the rotation. And then this year, 2022, he really blew up. And when you look at him as a 6'3", 322-pound defensive lineman, he is the push-the-pocket, blow-up-the-launch pad, enormous guy on the interior of the defense. Right? That's, that's the role Justin Rogers played at Kentucky and would presumably play uh, wherever he goes. Now... LSU is going to have a really tough recruiting battle. The good news is you got the guy on campus. Okay, He's here, literally, I mean, it's 3.05 Central Time on Thursday as we do this. He's here. Like, he's in Baton Rouge on campus. That's phenomenal news. You got him here. You got the first visit. Um, but Georgia is in the mix. Colorado's in the mix. And, you know, Coach Prime, you, you cannot underestimate Deion Sanders, Miami, which we know he's visiting this weekend. You got John Ruiz, the billionaire businessman who's funding all the NIL opportunities there at Miami. Of course, Oregon, Louisville. I mean, there, he, there's a lot of teams that are going to be in the mix for Justin Rogers. So this isn't one of those things where you go, oh, you got him on campus. He's coming to LSU. The other thing that I'll tell you is I, I think – Unlike at linebacker, where LSU is in desperate need of bodies, they kind of they knew defensive tackle was a must, and they already attacked it. Right, so remember, you know, Jaquelin Roy leaves early for the draft. So coming back, it's you're getting Mason Smith off of injury. You got Makai Wingo coming back, and then Jaquelin Roy. So you got three guys there that have played. You got the three guys that redshirted this year. Ty G. Hill, Fitzgerald West, and Quincy Wiggins, who could play inside or out. And so they knew they needed defensive linemen, interior players, so they went into the portal and they got Jordan Jefferson, of course, not that Jordan Jefferson, Jordan Jefferson from West Virginia, who's another big 300-plus pound dude, Paris Shand from Arizona, and Jalen Lee, former kid from Live Oak who went to, who went to Florida and now is, is coming back, back home. So you went and added three dudes with major college experience. So now you've got nine interior players. So it, you, they, do, they did not, by the way, sign any freshman interior defensive linemen. They have edge players, but no interior linemen. So you've got nine defensive tackles. Would Justin Rogers look at LSU and go, you got Mason Smith coming back. 
Makai Wingo was an All-American last year. Jacoby and Guillory and Justin Rogers physically looked the same. And then you went and added three dudes, and Jalen Lee really is very similar as well. The big 320, 330-pound dude that's a space eater that's going to try to just push the pocket. Uh, do they have room for a guy like Justin Rogers? So I'd look at it two ways. And by the way, Rogers has two years remaining. So because he's he's played three years, but everyone got the free COVID year. So he's got three to play two because he could take a redshirt year, which why would you? But he's got he's got two years essentially of eligibility remaining. Uh, if you're Rodgers, I think you look at it and you say, well, why would I want to go there? They have nine interior players and a couple of dudes that look just like me and do the same thing I do. So there isn't a, a clear path to the field. Now, Rodgers is a very good player. And I would assume that he would come, should he pick LSU, he'd come here and he would play. And he would have an opportunity to play because he's a really good player with three years of SEC experience and, and was a highly regarded dude and is coming here to try to get one year in a major program, boost his draft stock, and go pro. Um, so I don't know if Rodgers would pick LSU. That's what, But the other side of it is you could say, well, why would LSU want to add another body? And the, and the reason is because... It's it has to be in the transfer portal era, the same mindset that NFL teams have. In the NFL, you are always trying to get better. You are never standing pat with your roster. You are always, if there are free agents, if there are players that got cut, you always bring them in to work them out because you never know if that guy could be better than the guy you have, and you are always pushing the guys on your roster to continue to be better or someone's coming to take their job. That is a that is a constant state of mind in the NFL with managing a roster. And so too is it now in college football because of the portal. Because you don't have to be super selective with the guys you bring in because they you, you don't have to have them sit a year and then be ready to play. That's one. And two, also, there's no more hard cap. When you had a hard cap of 25 you had to be very selective with the guys you took because you could only take 25. Well, now you can take as many as you want. So the the mentality is always, does that guy make me better? So if you're Brian Kelly, if you're Jamar Kane, if you're Matt House, and you're looking at this and you go, okay, we got nine interior players. And if you look at it, man, Mason Smith is a gigantic dude and he's going to be starting. And Makai Wingo is an All-American. You assume he's going to be starting as well. But if you look at Jacoby and Guillory or Jalen Lee or Justin Rogers, and you go, okay, which of those three is the best prospect, physically the best, uh, the most experienced? Well, of those three, Justin Rogers is the answer. So, I mean, look, Guillory has been at LSU. Jalen Lee's been at Florida. Both guys have played. They've been part of rotations. All physically, they're very similar. But Rogers is the guy with the biggest upside, who's the highest-ranked recruit, who's played the most. And it's like that guy, presumably, makes you better at that position. So you absolutely take him because with the portal, the immediate eligibility, and with the elimination of the 25 hard cap, there's no risk. Like There's there's no risk to you whatsoever for taking a guy like that. And if one of the other guys beats him out, great. And if he wins the job, then you made your team better. So it makes a ton of sense for LSU to go after Justin Rogers. The question is, is Rogers going to find a spot where there's a more there's a clearer path to the field than at LSU where you know <laughs> 3 weeks ago you were uh paper thin at defensive tackle and now all of a sudden you've got a lot of bodies sifting through that to find your rotation is really the onus on this coaching staff right now and we'll see if Justin Rogers will be a part of it so again Justin Rogers uh one of the highest ranked recruits ever to sign at the University of Kentucky He's in the portal visiting LSU to today, Thursday and Friday um, before he heads down to Miami and then uh, checks off some other visits as well. So we'll keep you posted. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Please leave your comments. I love to interact. And be sure to hit the red subscribe button below.